but right after that happened, they <laughs> obviously closed the trail. Right along our wall is leaking water. I mean, just fabulous. I know what I'm doing, I just don't know the terms, okay? Good morning, guys. So we're heading down the road this morning to the Devil's Garden Trailhead. It's literally just down the road. And we're only, I don't know, we're only planning to do the first part of it to get to Landscape Arch, which apparently is the longest arch in North America. It says after that that the trail gets difficult. And we've yet to determine what difficult actually means because, I don't know, everything that we've been on that says easy has been like extra easy. And that makes sense, obviously, but um, the trail that we did last night to get back into the campground where it was all like rocky and canyon, that's not listed as an actual hike either. So we don't know what that would have been rated, but I have a feeling that that might have been rated like moderate, if not difficult. I don't really know how they rate their hike difficulties in the national park. So after Landscape Arch, it says that it gets more difficult with rock hiking and stuff. So. I don't know, we're just gonna see how it goes to Landscape Arch and then see how difficult it gets from there, I guess. I've got my coffee though and we're ready to go. Being that we don't have hookups, obviously our electrical outlets don't work. In the Class C when we had our inverter, obviously we just plugged everything into the inverter and ran things that way, but our Jayco trailer had a inverter prep wire in the hatch, so we were able to, with my dad's help, plug that inverter prep wire into the inverter and now we have working outlets from the inverter in our bedroom and also in the dinette and the entertainment area. So it's really handy because when we're not on hookups, we can just plug our coffee machine right into our bedroom outlet and have coffee ready in the bed in the morning. So that's like a fun perk of not having hookups. I mean, obviously we could do that any day, but we usually just make it in the kitchen like normal people. Anyways. We're like at the trailhead now, so let's go and see what it's like. You want some banana too? Please? Oh! Uh. Drop the nana. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> oh no. It's a morning kind of day. Here you go. Yeah, some nanas are down there. Now we gotta clean up. So convenient being in the campground coming here too. Because of with the pandemic, like we mentioned before, you have to start booking check-in times. You would have to try and book your time slot to come into Arches and do your hike when you're allowed in. Whereas we can just wake up, have coffee when we want, and then just down the road from our campsite, it's like a five minute drive, if that, to the most popular hike we're about to do right now. And here we are. Being camping, we have all the awesome hikes around the campground. We have all the views of the campground and we can just do everything on our own time schedule because we're campers. It just seems like the way to go if you're gonna see Arches National Park. When I saw the entrance to this hike, like the other day, I thought it was so cool. You're walking between two rocks and this little canyon thing. And don't get me wrong, it's still cool, but the hike that we did last night, that was still amazing. Yeah, this might be like my favorite national park we've ever seen. That feels like, racy to say because like <laughs> we've seen some pretty nice ones in Thailand, Banff National Park close to home is super beautiful at the Rocky Mountain Range but I don't know it's pretty special here. It is special. <laughs> Whoa is that it? Is that landscape arch? Biggest arch in the whole world! North America. <laughs> <laughs> So we think they should call this arch the broken arch because in the 90s this chunk here fell off and I forget how many tons it said of rock. A whole bunch of rock fell off and a photographer was here and caught a picture of it. How cool is that? They used to have a trail that would go up and under the arch but right after that happened they <laughs> obviously closed the trail. I think probably all these rocks here are what fell off the arch from right there. Anyways, we're gonna head a bit further down the trail. This is where it starts to get difficult. Um, it's turned to sand again, and I've got boots on this time, no sandals. Maybe someday when I've grown older, I can see it all clear from above. Looking back on it all, maybe I can see what was broken. So I would 
say that this is difficult. It's definitely walking up a rock surface. We're gonna go see if we can see this overlook and then probably head back for the nap time. Whoa! It is really surprising how easy it is to climb up these rocks being that they're sandstone. Like you grip so well and it doesn't feel dangerous at all. Just a little takes your breath away. <laughs> Well, that was a successful little trip out. That was so fun. Scrambling those rocks, getting good views, getting here early and beating some of the rushes we're starting to see yeah. already. So nice. And we saw a deer again. <laughs> we're just driving back to our campsite here, but like, look at this campsite. Campsite 21. You're up on the high point view. And just all of that there. Phenomenal camping. Phenomenal. Oh. I said phenomenal again. All right, kind of sketchy situation we're in here right now. As you may be aware, this is our 2022 brand new Jayco. We have no hookups, so we're using the water pump and just our batteries to get by here. But look at and listen at this. These are the wet spots. And then I'll get you some footage coming in here. Now it starts dripping. Right along our wall is leaking water. Not from the underbelly, but from the wall wrap itself. So as you can see, this is the underbelly that protects all of the bottom of the RV. This little bit of like housing wrap type material is what's in between the back end and the aluminum end of our wall. And this is probably the plywood wall right in here of that press board. So the water is coming out, seeping out in between the aluminum siding and this wrap, which means it's in the area that is supposed to be water protected in the end, trapping it in there more and having moisture on all those walls. And we do not want any water damage, so a little concerning. We searched under the sinks, under the shower, everywhere that we could possibly imagine that there would be water leaking from and couldn't find anything, which meant that we had to disassemble Chloe's bed, which is a huge pain, and get underneath her bed to where the hot water tank is. And we did actually find something there. We found where the water's coming from. Luke turned on the water pump and I just wiggled this a tiny bit and water started gushing out of this little elbow here. I guess this crimp must have come loose or this, I don't know what happened honestly. I think I need to straighten these up and retighten something or get a new crimp or something, but water is gushing out of this elbow here, which is insane. Okay, I got my little helper here. We went to Ace Hardware this morning. We bought one of these clamps that you can use on the braided vinyl tube. It's able to just tighten with a flathead screwdriver over here. So we're gonna cinch this on to clamp. Basically the hose yeah. is coming off of the little nipple thread that it goes on. So we're gonna suck that all on there. Chloe loves this colorful screwdriver. They had one of these crimped hose clamps on there, which is better for on the hard tubes. A lot of the hot and cold lines that they're down here use this, so I imagine they just use this on the vinyl tubing as well. So we pop this off with the screwdriver. We're gonna now put that hose on to where it belongs, tighten it on with this, and then that should stop our drip. Okay, my hose clamp is tightened on down there. We got a piece of paper towel to show any moisture that might come out. We're now turning the water pump on. A lot of lines to prime. Oh, you can hear these lines filling with water. I can see it in the red tube. All right, lines are pressurized and we're looking dry. So as we've mentioned, camping here at Arches, we don't have any water hookups or electric. We've been here a couple nights now. We've been running the heater at night because it's gotten down to almost freezing temps. So keeps the inside warm for us, keeps the underbelly warm for our water tanks, and then we've had the video to edit as well, so we've used some power. We're down to about 15% of our working amp hours left, so today seems like a good time to test out our new propane generator we bought. It's a gas or propane generator. We wanted propane just so we can run it right off the RV's propane, and then gasoline stings. So you don't want to carry a jerry can around, have it sloshing around in the back of the truck and all the fumes that come with it, so 
We're gonna give it a go here today. We know it works, obviously. We test drove it and kind of broke it in before we hit the road, but let's see, in like an hour or so, we're gonna run it, see how much we get up from the 15% working amp hours, see how much it gives us. It's not quite big enough to run the air conditioner, but we have a 50 amp lithium charge controller in there, so it should be able to power that no problem, which will give us enough juice to charge the house batteries. Even if it was like a 10,000 watt generator, it would only be able to charge your batteries as much as your charge controller inside the RV can put into the batteries, so. There's no need to go any bigger. We didn't want to run it all day using the AC. That and I mean most generator hours in parks are not during the middle of the day. So even if you wanted to run your AC, you couldn't. So we thought this was a nice light portable size with the propane option and it should meet our needs. But let's fire her up, see how she goes. It's been about a month or so since we started it. So hopefully it starts nice and easy. Okay, we're all hooked up to the RV propane here. If theory holds correct, we should turn it on to here. Three pulls, nice and easy should prime the propane and get it flowing down the line and into it. Now let's turn her to run, left-handed rip it and see what happens here. All right, it wasn't as smooth of a process as I hoped, but I was trying to start the generator using our 10 foot propane hose. I was gonna run it from the side the propane's on to the other side of the trailer, then the generator wouldn't be running on the side the campers and the tenters are currently on. But it was not starting there, so I plugged it in directly from the RV to the generator, taking up the 10 foot hose. I'm wondering if maybe there's a pressure issue if it's too long of a hose to get the propane to the generator to start it up. Okay, it's Luke from the future here. Turns out I just wasn't using the generator proper. There's a choke spot and I wasn't using it well. Let me show you quick here. Okay, so at home I always had to turn it down to prime i would do three pulls slowly not trying to start it just to get the propane into it and then i would turn it to the green run and that would start no problem at home so maybe it's an elevation thing but all i had to do in reality simple looking back on it now but it's just i turned it down to here and if not in that pull there i would prime it three more pulls turn to green and then turn the choke on again and it starts up beautifully now Alrighty, after a long day here at Arches, it's finally time to make some dinner. I also finally got my propane back from the generator. We have a battery monitoring system set up now, so we can see exactly what percentage our lithium batteries are at. And it also tells you how many amps are coming out of the batteries and also going into the batteries at any one time. So we were able to see that we were getting around 38, 39 amp hours going into the batteries. But now it's time for some tacos. This is a recipe that I found from another YouTuber. I'll post the video down below in the description, but he called them Cheater Bria Tacos. I guess Bria Tacos, I never knew this before, but they're like a stewed pork roast in like a barbacoa sauce. I have no idea, but I bought some barbacoa sauce and I brought some red enchilada sauce and I'm following his recipe. I made them before freaking good guys you have to try it anyways long story short I'm making them with ground beef instead of the stewed pork also I have to show you guys this you'll remember I was complaining about the wind and the black zone and how wind coming through really cuts down on the heat that the black zone gets so Luke and I made these really fancy wind guards I mean just fabulous basically I haven't found any yet that like fit the 22 inch perfectly because the sides are kind of slanted and long story short just haven't found them yet and I also just wanted to test it out and see how much wind guards would make a difference on the black zone and these were great like better than expected we just made them out of some aluminum pans and uh, yeah I honestly don't know if I want to invest in actual sheet metal ones but who knows I might I might not I might try and make these fancier we might try and like barbecue spray paint them to make them black <laughs> I mean I don't know we're just gonna see how they work we're gonna see if we can find any that fit properly on the black stone here so anyways let's get to cooking dinner Unreal. Can you hear that? I never would have got that in windy conditions without these wind guards. Like, amazing. And while well, Alicia's got this amazing meal cooking up, Chloe's down here walking in the dirt. 
Oh, falling down every now and then, but using the rock to stand up. She's clanking rocks. She was taking rocks and putting them on top of this rock. Look at, there she goes for him again. Love her so much, you couldn't ask for more out of a daughter. Someday she can look back on this and see how playful she was, but we love you, Chloe, you're such a good girl. Oh, boom. So, Alicia's delicious meal is cooked up. She crisped the taco, fried the meat, and stirred in the sauce to make it like a stewed pork, like she was saying. Taco, that was pretty close. And then you can open it up like so. Steamy hot on the inside. Ooh. And then we have all of our fixings here. We have pickled jalapenos. We've learned they're delicious. They're not very spicy, but they still have a little bit of jalapeno flavor, and it's a bit of a variation on the pickle. Those are great if you've never tried them. Onions, tomatoes, a queso sauce, some peach salsa, wow. some sour cream, wow. and all the yummy stuff. So we're gonna I load know, it up. Chloe. How about you eat some tomatoes and I'll cut you up some tacos. She's not gonna eat tomatoes. And then yeah, you just load it on inside the taco, reseal it back up, and a delicious meal made at home here by Alicia again. Wow. Thank you, Alicia. That dinner was delicious. Chloe's nap time's now coming up in about 20, er, bedtime. bedtime, <laughs> not nap time, excuse me. In about 25 or so minutes, we're just walking to the amphitheater here. We don't think they're doing any programs still, probably because of the pandemic times, which is unfortunate because I feel like we're slowly moving past that. But look at how cool it looks, though. Yeah, really nice. Behind a rock, you have a projection screen or something there. Yeah, I guess it is a projection screen. Yeah. They have a fire pit at the front, and behind, behind you is the skyline arch. Look how cool that is. Again, another arch you can see right from the campground here. It's such a nice spot. We've loved our time here in Arches. Yeah. Sadly, it is our last night here, and then we're packing up and going. We're moving on to a nice state park. It's a nice in-between. And then next, we're in Capitol Reef National yeah. Park, our second of the five Mighty Five National Parks we're going to be checking out. So stay tuned if you've never seen Capitol Reef and you want to see it. We're there for five nights, so we should really get to enjoy it, check out some good stuff while we're there, and we're looking forward to it. Anyways, we'll see you next time, guys. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Night. We went to Ace Hardware store and we bought one of these clamps that you can use on the flex what, vinyl tube? What's it called? Brand new vinyl. They had originally one of these crimped. They had originally one of these crimped hose tubes on there, which you can use for the PEX tubing. Is it PEX? They had one of these crimped what's it called? This terminology's hard. <laughs> 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 Darn it, they had clamp. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm doing, I just don't know the terms, okay? I also like how you're holding up <laughs> the hatch with your head right now. Yeah? <laughs> Chloe ain't doing it and you ain't doing it. Gotta use your head sometimes.